Hello again everyone, this is Jay and welcome to another Python video. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys some basic error handling. Let's go ahead and dive right in. So here on my screen, we actually have the program that I had wrote in the previous video. And we're going to add some actual error handling to this script. But before we do that, I want to show you a very basic example of error handling first, and then we'll come back to this script and add that new found knowledge to that. So let's go ahead and minimize this and I will create a new script. I'm going to call mine script2. Okay, so here I created a tuple called foods and I put in some yummy Italian dishes in that little tuple there. And then I wrote a print statement to show the contents of that tuple. So I told you in a previous video that you can't actually change a tuple after it's created. So what I'm going to do is add some basic error handling. I'm going to try to make the error happen on purpose. Before I do that, I'll just show you the output of what I've written so far. All right, so I'll go ahead and run it. And it's simply printing the tuple, so nothing surprising there. So I, as I mentioned in the previous video, and I even showed you this, you can't actually change an item in the tuple. So what I'm going to do is do that anyway. So I'm going to change item number one, which is actually ravioli. And I'm gonna set that equal to macaroni. And let's go ahead and run the script. And we're getting a traceback. As I showed you in a previous video, we cannot change a tuple. It's an immutable data type. And when we try to change it here, we get an exception. An exception is another word for error. We want to be able to handle errors in our script and predict them and try to handle them in advance. And what that does is it gives us control over what kinds of error messages the user will see. Now, obviously, in this example, we are making an error happen on purpose. But later in this video, I'll show you a more practical example. So let's go ahead and add some exception handling to this script. So I'm going to drop this down a couple lines. And right above it, I'm going to write the keyword try. I'm going to indent this four spaces. We have to indent four spaces on a try. And then I'm going to type accept, which is short for exception. And I'm going to print something here. Let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. All right, here goes. It says there was an error. So I'll go ahead and bring that back to the foreground and let's try to see what exactly happened here. So right here I created a try statement and what I'm doing is I'm going to try to add or change value one in the tuple and set it equal to macaroni. Now accept means if that fails, you know, you could do something else. In this case I'm printing there was an error. Now, obviously, I knew there would be an error because I'm not even supposed to try to do what I'm doing in the first place, but I wanted you guys to see a very basic example of try and accept, which is basic exception handling. And what we're doing here is we have a little bit of control over the error. So, for example, I could put in the print statement, there was an error, please call the help desk at this number and report it, or something like that. I can have control over the error messages because if I was to remove this, you would only see the exception that we saw previously, which uh, is basically something that Python is going to show, which may or may not be very useful to the you know actual user. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this script and bring back the previous one from the previous video. All right, so here we have the script from the previous video. And basically, as a little reminder, what it did was it basically, I have a check command right here, which is a list, and it's just basically checking to see if that's running, captures the error code, 
prints it's running if it's running and actually if it's not running it just goes and it tries to start it. Now the problem here is there's all kinds of things that can go wrong. Maybe the user doesn't have systemd on their Linux distribution so in their case the systemctl command may not be available. So what I'm going to do is actually add an error to our program just to show you that this concept will work here as well. I'm just going to simulate a typo by just removing the M. So I have a command, it's supposed to be systemctl, but it's misspelled so that won't work. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add the try statement here. And now that I've done that, I need to indent that for spaces. And then I'll add the accept. And I'll print. There was an error starting the process. Let's go ahead and run it right now. And I'll make sure that this program is running by doing sudo system ctl stop sshd. And let's go ahead and run the script. There was an error starting the process. So basically, I was able to add some error handling right here, but that's not actually very useful because I made the error happen. And the only reason why this error even happened in the first place is because I misspelled systemctl. But what I'm going to actually do real quick is just show you what this actually looks like if I didn't actually include a typo in systemctl. Let's just pretend that the sshd daemon wasn't on the system. And what I'm going to do to simulate that is just change the name of it. But basically what I'm simulating is a situation where we're trying to start a process that's not even found on the system. So in this case, it's SSHD, but I'm adding another D just to simulate that. What I also added here was exit one. So basically what that's going to do is exit out of the entire script because there's no reason for me to continue on and print the check command here and show that on the terminal if the program has failed at this point anyway. And exit one basically makes it so that there is an exit code of one which is unsuccessful and then it exits the script. And this is useful not only just to exit the script, I mean I could have simply just done exit, but exit one is useful if you want to check the exit code as well. But, um, and that's not necessarily specific to this. You could use exit one anywhere in the program where you think it's necessary. But I just wanted to show you that. But anyway, something interesting is actually going to happen when I run this script and I have this misspelled. So I'm going to go ahead and show you right now. So I'm going to go ahead and stop SSH and now run the script. It's going to ask for my password to start the service, which of course will fail because the service that it's starting is not the one that I want it to start. And we get an error right here. Failed to start SSHD service. The unit was not found. So why did that happen? Well, actually, this command, systemctl, is recognized by the system, and the output that we got was actually from subprocess.call, and our little print statement here didn't actually execute because there wasn't an actual exception. For all intents and purposes, subprocess was able to do it. It ran the systemctl command. The systemctl binary is present, and it wouldn't have printed this because the actual command for systemctl already has something built in to handle that and tell you basically the service doesn't exist. So this print statement never actually executed. I'm going to go ahead and correct the name of that binary. So I made a quick change to the program. So what I did here, guys, is I changed subprocess.call to subprocess.check underscore output. And this is still going to run the command just like subprocess.call would. The difference here is it's actually going to care about the output, which will then allow us to use that in our try statement right here. And again, I'm going to introduce a typo here. I'm just going to add another D just to simulate a process name that doesn't exist on the actual system. So I'm going to go ahead and save the file. And then I'm going to go ahead and stop SSH. Now let's go ahead and run the script. 
It's going to detect that SSH isn't running because the typo isn't until later. And it's going to give me a password prompt right here because the command I want to run is actually dependent on sudo privileges or root privileges. And you can see right here, it's got the extra D. So it's, we already know it's trying to start the wrong process. But I'm going to go ahead and put in my password. And it says, failed to start sshdd.service, unit was not found, which is still the output that we would get anyway from systemctl telling us that it can't find the process we actually want to start, but it actually printed our custom error right here that we have in this print statement. Now I'm going to make another change to this as well to show you an additional feature of try that will allow us to be even more resourceful with error handling. So here for accept, I'm going to do sub process dot called process error as E. You could check the documentation here, but basically sub process has a method called called process error. And effectively what I'm doing is I'm creating the exception here and I'm capturing this specific exception instead of just, you know, accept by itself, which, you know, as we've been doing so far in this video, catches every exception. You can actually try to catch a particular exception type. In this case, I specifically want to capture this one error and I want to create it as an object named E. And now what it's going to do, as always, is there's an error starting the process. But then what I can do is also print E. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this one more time. Stop SSH and then run the script. Password. There we go. There is an error starting the process. And then it gives us the actual exception that the subprocess command itself is seeing. And then it's showing that to us because we basically captured that as E. And we are basically specifically looking for this particular type of error. And we're going to print there is an error. And then print the actual exception. And we're going to exit one, which means if we need to run an additional script, which needs to check the error code of this or the exit code of this script, this script is going to produce an exit code that other scripts can then use. Now, don't worry too much if some of this is a little bit overwhelming because, you know, you probably wouldn't have known to check called process error unless you read the documentation for sub process. Basically, I just wanted to let you know that you can capture a particular type of exception if you're interested in a certain one. And you can also optionally save that. Another example could be the file not found exception, which is a very common one. In previous videos, we actually worked on creating files. And we could actually do that in a try except, which basically means that we can capture the file not found error if we have any reason to believe that there could be an error and have the program basically behave accordingly. So when you're writing programs, you want to basically be mindful of the things that could go wrong. Now, obviously, you're never going to be able to predict every possible error. Users are brilliant in the number of silly things that they can come up with and do on their system to break it in spectacular ways. But as a developer, you basically want to try to predict what a user could do as best you can. And while you'll never reach 100%, if it's something obvious, like you're working with seeing if a file is found or basically you need to write to a file, okay, well, what if the file doesn't exist? So maybe when you want to write a file, you might have a try statement that basically is going to capture if the file doesn't exist, then you, know, you can basically act accordingly and go from there. With that said, uh, stay tuned. I will have more videos in this series uploaded very soon. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching my video, guys. I really appreciate it. And if you want to help me out, go ahead and check out the links in the show notes below this video, where I have a link to my Patreon page, as well as an Amazon store, where I have a listing of hardware that I've personally tested myself to be compatible with Linux. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. And I look forward to making more videos for you guys very soon. Thanks again.